It's fitting that the Hollywood Inn, the worldwide symbol of the entertainment industry, was conceived as an outdoor ad campaign, for a suburban housing development called Hollywood Land. After all, despite the high profile of the film biz, real estate has always been Hollywood's primary economic driver. Although the Inn's appearance and purpose have evolved over the years, its basic aspirational message remains the same, this is a place where magic is possible, where dreams can come true. Back then, the dream was a beautiful home and lifestyle, today, the Inn's promise is more subtle, and can only be described as the parade of images desires and ideas conjured by the word Hollywood. Imagine a time when the only stars in Hollywood were found in the crystal, clear night skies Arkin, G over rolling hills. This was the setting for the area's native people, the Gabrielinos, all was quiet until 1907. When Bad Weather drove a small Chicago film company westward to complete a shoot, the first real studio, Nestor Film Company, soon followed from New Jersey, cranking out three pictures a week, one western, one eastern, and one comedy, for a grand total of $1,200. By 1915, America was officially film crazed, and Hollywood was shaping into the glamorous, sometimes surreal landscape we've come to know and love. Hopeful actors and actresses filled the streets, dazzled by a new American dream, film stardom, Hollywood, which by now represented not just a city, but also an industry, a lifestyle and, increasingly, an aspiration, was officially crowned when the Hollywood Land sign was erected in 1923. Hollywood has always been a place where, Visionaries harness technology for entertainment and commute. Nication's Mount Lee, the home of the Inn, bears the name of a famous entrepreneur who made this ridge in Griffith Park into one of the most important historical sites in television history. The advent of synchronized sound sent the picked, your industry reeling, as the big studios frantically re tooled and, acting careers were ruined and made overnight. When Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941, Hollywood mobilized to become a full, time war industry. Tudio trucks transported troops instead of movie sets. Tars like Clark Gable, Jimmy Tewart and Victor Mature quickly enlisted, the film industry's high profile made it full in the post-war climate of anti-liberal hysteria. By the early 50s, 400 actors, writers, directors and producers were blacklisted, and paranoia prevailed. During the 90s Hollywood suffered through a mass exodus of residents to the suburban and Fernando Valley. Even more distressing was the flight of film power centers to the valley and other less cramped D environs. By 9070, Paramount was the only studio left in town. By the late 1917, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce determined that the IGN required a complete rebuilding, carry I, NG a price tag of a quarter million dollars. Thankfully, some of showbiz's biggest names came to the rescue. The Ign has always served as a barometer for the community, and as Hollywood re blossomed, so too did the Ign, which benefited from a range of new preservation efforts. On December 31, 1999, the Ign was the site of the West Coast's highest profile Y2K celebration ringing in the new millennium with a dazzling display of lights and special effects. In 2003, the Ign celebrated its 80th anniversary, at a gala celebration hosted by the late movie musical, 
legend Esther Williams. At the time, she was another remarkably preserved octogenarian. The birthday party was held during the opening ceremonies for the Ephifist, which was sponsored, in part by the Trust, in 2010, 30, two years after the Eden was rebuilt. The Eden's number one fan, Hugh Hefner, presented the Hollywood Eden Trust with the closing gift to Av the Peak, capping efforts to raise funds to purchase and protect the 138 in danger. D acres behind the Hollywood Inn. In preparation for the 90th anniversary in 2013, the Hollywood Inn Trust and Herwin Williams teamed up to give the Inn a more complete make over Hollywood's civic restoration, which began in the 1970s, picked up steam in the ensuing decades. Fueled by a growing reverence for what the industry had come to represent worldwide, the Eden has always served as a barometer for the community, and as Hollywood re blossomed, so too did the Eden, which benefited from a range of new preservation efforts.